Okay, now it's time. Let's do this. Continue. Which is our most recent save? They're all on the same day. This looks like the latest time. Okay. And I believe I left off right at the scene of the crime because we're going to start investigating before the trial. So you guys can see... Oh, I guess the body does not have the mask on anymore. Okay. I couldn't remember. So this is the body that was apparently both stabbed and involved in an explosion, I believe. So let's check this out. Oh, and there's the knife I think that was used. I like the music here. It's a jam. Okay, what do we got here? If I check the body more thoroughly, maybe I'll find out for sure if it's Kyoko or not. I really hope it's not Kyoko, because if we don't have Kyoko, we're kind of doomed. She really carries us through this game, you know? Oh, creepy. See, I, that hand with those crazy fingernails and the tattoo? I don't recognize that. Huh. There's something weird about the body's fingernails. Oh, these are fake nails. They're really long. They seem like they'd get in the way of normal activity. Oh, and if I remember correctly, they also said this body had some, like, bruising on it, like it had been in a fight or something, but, like, days before. So that's kind of interesting. There's also something on the back of her right hand. Is this a tattoo? It got burned, so I can't make out the whole thing, but... It looks like it's a picture of a dog or something. I've never seen anything like it before. A picture of a dog tattoo? Something my wife would get. Oh yeah, it looks like kind of a wolf head or something. We're actually not sure, Alex. Our best guesses are that it's either Kyoko, which we don't know where she is right now, or I can't think of the character's name. I'll have to check the uh, logs later, but whoever they believe might be the mastermind. I think they, or the, the hidden 16th student, I think they called her. It's supposed to be a female. The whole, or the white jacket the victim was wearing got totally burnt up. There's only one little piece left. Let's see what else I can look at. There's like a big hole right here. The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the top half got set on fire, so I dumped a body or a, a bucket of water on it. Which explains why the bottom half isn't wet. I know, Alex, I, it better not be Kyoko, or we're screwed. There's nothing strange about that, right? <laughs> There's nothing normal about any of this. The upper half of the body got set on fire in the explosion, so it's totally blackened. Also, the top half of the body is wet because we tossed water on it. That's because it got set on fire and I threw water on it. Since I only threw water on the part that was on fire, the top half, the bottom half is still dry. They keep repeating that, it's gotta be important, yeah. In other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? <laughs> Okay, I think we've looked at everything on the body. Let me double check the spot right here. Yep, same thing. Okay. Step away from the dead body. See, if Kyoko was here, she'd be touching it and moving it all over the place. But she always does a better job than we do at, uh, I was gonna say dissecting the body, but you know, checking it thoroughly. So here's a knife. There's a knife laying on the ground. Is this? Yeah, see, that's what it used to look like. When we first saw the body, there was the mask and a knife in, right there. It must be the knife that was stuck in the body before it exploded. Oh, now I'm kind of remembering the last stream. I think we were about to take off the mask. Um, didn't we have Toko do it? Toko was going to take off the mask, and then it just exploded, right? Oh, why is it giving me the mouse controls? I started it with the controller on. <laughs> oh, well. The force of the explosion must have thrown it over here. The Monokuma file said the knife went all the way through the body from front to back. Does that mean this knife is what caused the fatal injury? Well, the body looked like it was already dead before the explosion. Either way, this knife, it looks really familiar. Wait, is this? Yeah, remember that big Rambo knife we saw earlier? That's it. It's the knife that person was holding. This is getting really weird. There are just too many strange coincidences. 
And in our dreams, first we saw the masked person, and then they disappeared because we were like sick, kind of hallucinating almost. And then we saw Kyoko right there. Whoever the person in the mask was that attacked me last night, they were holding that knife. And that same knife was used to stab the same masked attacker we found here. Oh, of course, Alex. I will definitely return the favor. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, maybe this masked person got stabbed because... When they attacked, I was kind of in a trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife. And maybe then I... Like, are we the ones that killed them? We don't know. We were kind of sick and delusional, so it's hard to say. And if there really is Kyoko, it would mean Kyoko is the one that attacked me. But why the mask? I just don't know. I don't remember anything clearly from last night. No. No, it can't be. There's no way. I would sooner believe this hidden 16th um, student might be the one wearing the mask. And I'm hoping that's the one that's dead. These look like fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't really be sure, but I feel like I've seen something like it before. But where? Wait, was it there? I'll have to double check that later. Wait, where? I don't recognize that personally. I wish you'd give me more hints. <laughs> Now let's talk to people. Hmm. Good thing, Makato. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, really? What do you want to talk about? So, in other words... I'd like to hear your alibi. Uh, alibi? Yeah, now it's going to look sus on us. You know, we had a tough time getting out of the first trial, but every trial since then has been a cakewalk for us. Nobody has thought it's been us. We got to play detective. Now we got to play defense attorney as well. The alibi. Words. Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Um, well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. But why are you asking about that now? And what's nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious? This murder took place after nighttime. How can you be? How can you know that for sure? Hmm. Because after uh, nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going to look around for everyone, so I could tell them about Monokuma. Yeah, the one that broke down. Hiro's been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I could confirm that when I arrived last night, there was no dead body here. In other words... So the murder could only have taken place at some point during nighttime, after I left the garden. If he's telling us the truth, I don't believe this guy half the time. However... Toko, Hiro, and Hina and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? Hmm. Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's room to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have an airtight alibi. The only one who don't have al the only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one without an alibi. Hey, Hasifa, welcome back, dude. How's it going? How was your weekend? Hmm. Also, when we went to get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. What? But you never came to the door. So where precisely were you? We were sick. I'm telling the truth. I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... <laughs> That's hardly an alibi. I know. <laughs> so, what now? You seem to be at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi. That's really bad, isn't it? Alright, we got a lot of sus on us right now. Oh, and Hasifa, I checked out that Kickstarter that you posted on the Discord. Those glasses seem really cool, <laughs> but I definitely want to like wait and see how they actually perform and all that. So I don't think I'll do the Kickstarter, but very curious to see where they're, you know, how they're going to turn out. Also, update on my Steam Deck that's supposed to be coming. Anyway, they're they're shipping it by like a donkey or something. It's taking forever to get here, but it's supposed to be here tomorrow, 
which I'm super excited about because I actually work from home tomorrow. So I won't have to freak out about wondering, oh, is it outside? Is it waiting on my porch? I can just get it immediately. So that's nice. Hmm. It's coming FedEx, though, so I, I forget what time they deliver. I think they deliver later in the afternoon, unfortunately. Uh, it's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and... For serious? Oh, well, I was just thinking when we first uh, found the body... When the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monokuma's announcement woke me up at 7 o'clock, as usual, and I headed for the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina, and it was right around 7.30. Then I headed to the gym, where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. What time was it then? Hmm. Now then, Toko, what time is it? <laughs> well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. That's right. It had to have been right around 9 o'clock. You know? Uh, and now that you mention it, I think you're right. Hmm. So, I think we can say for sure that the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. <laughs> no, it's not. That's a pretty small job. Okay, let's check with uh, Hina. Hmm. Listen, Makoto, do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Um, if I remember right, it was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. Also, there was a knife sticking out of the stomach, and the area around it was stained with blood. Oh, Hasifa! Um, I was trying to show Andy some of the trailers of the games you guys requested, just to make sure uh, they can all get approved before we stream them. And I looked at the one you had requested. I had no idea it was, like, in space. Is this one, like, sci-fi? <laughs> I assumed it was going to be, like, the same exact style as the previous one, just a new case or something. But it looked totally different. Not what I expected at all. Apparently, the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood on the body was still wet. The Akuya said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody. But for how much blood there was in the body, I didn't see any on the ground around it. Okay. Which makes you think that maybe the body was moved there. Wow, thanks. That was a big help. Now that you explained it, I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it a lot better too. Okay, so same universe, but way in the future. Okay, but I'm guessing then not the same main character. No, Alex, not everyone has yet. I got Hasifa's approved right away, and he hates retro graphics. But uh, both Sherlock and the other one she needs to think about. <laughs> I'd give him about 50-50. I think yours, Alex, is probably more of a sure thing, and the Sherlock might be a little bit tougher, but I'll do my best. And if it does not get approval, I'll check with uh, Phantasma to get a, a runner-up game. So, thank you, too. And finally, Toko. So who does that body belong to? Nice. Oh, cool. I like that. I like how it actually will tie in together a little bit, Hasifa. Huh, Whoever it is, I'm not going to look. I don't want to faint anymore. That's right. She can't stand blood. Now, Genocide Jack, on the other hand. <laughs> oh, we've been told they've always needed approvals because I do also play games with my wife. But usually we pick those games that we're going to play together, whether it's a single player game or a multiplayer game. So if you guys request a game or even if I think of a game I want to stream, I always run it by my wife first. Be like, hey, is this a game that you really want to play with me or is this one I could just play by myself? And if she says I can play with myself, it's totally fine to stream. I remember there were some chickens in the chicken coop. I count four chickens. There used to be five. Huh, four. Yo! Uh, what's going on, Makoto? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Hmm. Uh, of course. There were precisely five. And, uh, Jada, what's going on, Jada? Uh, you're still at school, and you did some art. What kind of art did you do? Huh? Uh, what's wrong? There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Huh? <laughs> uh oh, he seems upset. 
<laughs> That's so weird. I wonder when it disappeared. But uh, I was down here just before nighttime last night, and there were definitely five chickens in. What? Uh, what are we going to do? Going from five to four is going to have an impact on the structure of the world. No, it's not. Conspiracy! It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Even if a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. Oh yeah, absolutely, Weepatome. You learn these lessons very quickly when you're married. <laughs> you learn, okay, what can I just do like without needing approval? And what do I need approval for? Relationships are all about compromise, right? Same thing goes with like TV shows and movies. Like when I'm streaming, she usually likes to crochet and like watch something on TV. So if she looks if she looks at a show and she knows it's not for me, it's like some, I don't know, teenage sexy vampire show. That's all her. She can watch that all she wants. But she might see a show and it's like, oh, this looks like Breaking Bad or something. And then she'll run it by me and I check out a trailer and I'm like, oh, you can watch it on your own. And I'm like, no, we should check that out together. So it definitely goes both ways. So why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? <laughs> Phantasma. Isn't that how we all learn everything? <laughs> By making mistakes? <laughs> okay, so... I wonder if this giant plant could have anything to do with this. Okay, weird prediction. I can't say for sure, but... Uh... Remember how they were saying there was a lot of blood? What if, like, that was a trick. Maybe the blood didn't actually come from the stab wound. What if it came from a chicken? Like they actually used like chicken blood and poured it all over there to look like a stab wound, but it actually been killed by something else, you know? Oh, Jada, I'm doing great. I'm so happy. I got tomorrow I get to work from home, and I'm also supposed to get my Steam Deck tomorrow, which I'm very excited to play with that and test it out. The Monokuma flower, huh? Is it true? Does it really eat paper, plastic, and people? The three P's of life. Anyway, I don't think it's related to the case, so I think I'll just stay away. <laughs> For like a game request, Alex? You could say that, but it's really just depending on her, you know, um, uh, I guess her interests. Like for example, you could pick like the coolest looking horror game. She's probably not going to want to see it. She's not a big fan of horror games. So those are usually easy for me to pick. Oh, we should probably check the tool shed as well. Wait. Oh, you absolutely can, Phantasm. I was totally joking before. <laughs> oh, Jada, have a safe trip home. Okay, just to be sure, I should take a look in the tool shed. This room is dusty and disorganized. In other words, a pretty stereotypical tool, sh uh, tool shed. My tool shed is terrible. I definitely need to clean it out soon. Oh, what's this? A tarp? It's a tarp. Wait, was there a tarp in here before? I don't think so. I should probably look into that. It could be related to the case. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime, but the underside, it's totally clean and completely dry. One side of that tarp is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. Hmm, wet and dirty. What I was thinking? Remember I, how I thought maybe they had moved the body? Because there wasn't blood all over the floor? What if they used this to like move the body and then clean all the blood off but forgot to clean off the bottom side where it would be like all wet and gross? And you've been having fun playing Mario 64 or Mario Golf 64 on the Switch? It just came out on the subscription. Oh, that's awesome, Hasifa. How many N64 games do they have on the uh, Switch? Um, what do they call it? Like their Nintendo Switch Plus pack? Or it's like expansion pack? I forget. <laughs> Fantastic one. No, no, no. We will respect your wishes. Oh, you got a ring fit? Andy really enjoyed it. She hasn't played it recently, but... She really got into that ring fit when she first got it. Online expansion, there it is, yeah. That's the one thing in here that concerns me. Which means, I guess I don't really need to look at anything else, right? Everything else looks the same. Let's get out of here. Do you guys know of anything you can use to like get rid of spiders like on a long-term basis? Because I really want to clean out that shed, but I think after doing that, I'd like to put some like traps or something to keep spiders out of there. 
Oh yeah, there's controls over here. That's right. I remember we can like turn the water on and off, I think. This is the panel to control sprinklers. They're set to turn on at 7.30 every morning, and Monokuma said the time positively couldn't be changed. Huh, hold on. So the sprinklers turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? Then, if the body was here before then, the sprinklers would have gotten it wet. Which would mean the murder must have taken place. Aha! The plot thickens. I think I've checked everything I need to in this area. But I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check. Specifically, that fragment I found before. There's somewhere I need to go in order to confirm my suspicions. I can't remember what that is. And I still need to find out more about Kyoko. Is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true... Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? If I can find out more about her, maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to her room... Oh wait, the Yakuya has it. Now. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options? Just give up. Give me the key to your room. That's right. She doesn't even have her key to get in there. Let's see. Oh, 14 games so far. Not bad. There's still a lot to go, but not too bad. And you don't think it's as effective as regular exercise, but it was fun to play around with. Yeah, I think on like the higher levels, Phantasma, you can definitely get a decent workout. But I think what might be more effective is for people that don't like to work out, if you gamify it, you might be more motivated to do it on a regular basis, you know? Let's see, an exterminator? Wait, what, what, what are you replying to there, exterminator? And you will stick to attempting to beat Saber Expert Plus. That's a really good workout. Uh, they can usually lay down some nice sprays that should deal with them. Oh, oh, as far as spiders. Yeah, spiders. I, I mean, I would like something that I could just, like, set it and forget it, you know? Like, we get ants. I don't need exterminators for ants. Ant tramps seem to work pretty well, where they grab the food, take it back to the queen, and just kill the whole colony. I've had pretty good luck with that stuff, anyway. So I wonder if they have something similar for spiders. And you're still trying to get three stars on the 200 CC levels. Oh, those are so fast, Phantasma. Okay, I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. And Crystal, what's going on, Crystal? Welcome. And how do you gamify workouts? Essentially, find a game that's fun to play, but also is very physically exhausting. Like um, Beat Saber, for example. You play that on the high difficulties, it's really exhausting, but it's super fun. Or if you play like rock band on drums or maybe DDR, like dancing, like great workouts, but the games are also fun. Okay, so I think we're done here, but I need to find out where that thing came from. Let's see if we can check our truth bullets and see what that item was. Does it tell me? There was bits of charred debris near the body. It seems familiar to something that was seen earlier. I don't remember what that is. It almost looks like part of a picture frame or something, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right, Crystal? We have no idea who the burnt person is yet. Oh, I bet VR boxing games would be good, too. I've never played a VR boxing game. Um, Wii boxing was exhausting, so it's got to be the same thing. That's actually a really good workout. If you just stand up fairly straight and uh, or get, like, a good stance and then just shadow box, like, just punching air as fast as you can for, like, two minutes, it's really hard to do. Um... Okay, I think we get back out of here. Oh, I don't think I've seen everything there is to see. What are we missing? Um... Oh, the fragments laying around the body. Oh, that's the same thing we looked at earlier. Oh, there's something up here. Oh, that was easy to miss. Oh, that's good, Phantasma. That's good. I mean, you do want to be a bit sore, but not too sore. Those nozzles poking out. Are those the sprinklers? Is that what I needed to find? I don't think so. That thing has like a bonus thing. Yeah, there's still more here. Maybe the camera? Oh, we have access to that room with all the cameras now. No matter when, no matter where, surveillance cameras are following our every move. I mean, they're absolutely everywhere. How many cameras does this place have anyway? 
You know, what are some of like the big games you guys are excited for coming up this year? I was just thinking of games that I definitely know I would like to stream. And uh, The Query. I think The Query would be a really fun one for, one for us to play together. Maybe we can play when it first comes out. Okay, maybe I need to talk to somebody. I feel like I've looked at everything. Hey, um, Yakuya? Hmm. If you do come up with an alibi, I'd be happy to hear it later at the class trial. No, no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect after all. Oh, crap. What? Of course. Oh, is it not Query? What, what is it? Or Quarry? <laughs> I guess Query is more of a question. Oh, it's, um, whatchamacallit? Not Sonic Mania. They call it something else, Crystal, because Sonic Mania already came out. It's the one that has, like, the, the first three Sonic games and Sonic & Knuckles, right? With, like, enhancements. What do they call that? They have a special name for it, but I know the one you're talking about. Of course. If I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Then will you go with me? Hmm. Sorry. I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Goodbye. Depending on my mood, I may go with you. Or I may not. What a jerk. Come back later, huh? Okay. Then in the meantime, I should look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out that one area. I don't know what area he's talking about. Maybe it'll show me on the map. The game's actually pretty good about kind of telling you where you should be going next. Oh, it must be in the gym. Let's try that. And you want to play the quarry too? Uh, you were, oh yeah, Hogwarts Legacy. To be honest, that's probably not for me. I mean, maybe if it just gets amazing reviews from a gameplay standpoint, but I'm not like the hugest Harry Potter fan, but Andy is. So we will definitely probably be playing that game. Oh, is the plot not very good? I didn't know there was a leak on the plot. Frontiers. Oh, that's like the new 3D one, isn't it? That's right. Oh, that'll be really cool. I was going to say, there was another one that's kind of more of a remake of the old ones. I thought that's what you were talking about. Is this where we're supposed to go? Monokuma's lane dismantled on the floor, but... I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? Oh, that's part of the bomb. That's right. Uh, I just found something. What is it? It's... Huh? It's what? Hmm. A bomb. There's one installed in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. What? What? Uh, a bomb? <laughs> and that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about it. The fragments I found in the garden. Ah, they match the bomb? Okay, I've checked everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. I should head back to the garden and ask Byakuya. If he's already back there, right? Oh, and the new Fallen Order. That's coming out pretty quick. Nice. Really? Oh, uh, that doesn't make any sense, Phantasma. You would think with everything going on with uh, uh, what's it, J.K. Rowling, they would be staying so far away from any of that crap. Why would they put that in their game? I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, there's the garden. So we can go right here. Oh, I am excited for Plague Tale 2. Good call. I definitely want to play that. That was a fun stream. I enjoyed that one. You think you can go soon, Byakuya? Let's go. You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well. Let's go. Ah, wait for me. Byakuya walked off without a second glance, and I hurried after him on our way to the dorms. Yeah, I feel like this year is kind of a uh, slower year for big releases. Not that there's none, but it seems like since COVID, they're a little bit more spread out. I remember 20, 2019 and 2020 were like huge, huge games releases. <laughs> right, Zakobo? <laughs> That's like, oh, that made the choice easy, right? Hmm. Well then, here we go. Byakuya took out the key and slid it into the keyhole. And then... And it's open. Looks like it. Thanks. Oh, Weebatome. That really sucks, doesn't it? Although, you may be surprised, Weebatome. Every once in a while, there's games that just come out of nowhere. 
that just blow my socks off. You know, that was Valheim with me a couple years ago. I love that game. I had no idea what it was before it came out. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Oh yeah, I definitely know that there's some of that stuff like, I guess, ingrained into the books of uh, Harry Potter. But with everything going on, you would think that they would be extra careful to not put that crap in there. Because <laughs> it seems like they're also trying to distance themselves from J.K. Rowling anyway, right? All right, this is the first time we've seen inside of Kyoko's room, I think. So, this is Kyoko's room. There's not much here. What is this? There's something on the table. It's a woodblock decoration. What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers at those really traditional public bathhouses use them for their lockers. Hmm. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. Oh, because yours is so special, aren't you? That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Byakuya doing something like that. It's certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo? What's the dojo? Is that that room right before uh, you go into the gymnasium? There's like some stuff behind like glass counters maybe. That's wild. That's so wild. It's so sad. I mean, I guess it, it's kind of nice that she kind of, you know, shows her true colors so we know what a trash person that she is. But usually people can, like, go their whole lives having those beliefs and they just keep it hidden. And you just never know until sometimes post-mortem or something. Like, wow, that was a terrible person. Or once, like, you know, they're done working, essentially. Oh, that's terrible. She just keeps keeps on going, huh? Just keeps on going. How, how deep can she dig this hole, essentially, right? I guess we should probably check everything. Maybe there's something in the bed. Here's her bed. I don't see anything interesting here. At least not as far as the case is concerned. How about the bathroom? Here's the bathroom. She might have taken certain articles hanging out to dry. I'd better not look inside. What? She could be dead. I think you want to check that out. Regardless. Okay, I think that's the only thing here. What? You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. Come on. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take my t uh, take time out of my search to come here? Sorry. <laughs> Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete. Oh, I know. Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. Huh? What's this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. Well, we don't know if something happened to you, but all we can do is assume that's your dead body. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it. Hmm. What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happens, I should open it. Hmm. Well, Interesting. something certainly happened, so open it. There we go. Let's see. Oh, that's right, Sokobi. Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff that came out about uh, the Cthulhu writer as well, right? H.P. Lovecraft? Yeah, and it seems like a lot of that happens post-mortem, too. Because they're not so crazy to, like, just be open with it. So I guess at least we can hate on J.K. Rowling while she's relevant, right? <laughs> there's always that. <laughs> oh, no. Which game was that, Phantasma? I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets? You didn't check the bed thoroughly! What? That's all that was in there? 
Yeah, looks like it. That's a great clue. What are you talking about? That's all that's under there. Under the sheets. What could it be? Hmm. I don't know. Could it be here? Oh, it was Sinkin' City. I have not played that one yet. I think Spider Monkey streamed it, but I haven't tried it myself. But could something be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted up the sheets... What's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Why didn't you just put that in the envelope? <laughs> Class of number 78, student registry. Oh, I think that's for the who they think is the um, 16th hidden student or the mastermind. Mokuro Ikusaba. We've heard that name a few times. I see. Forspoken. I've heard of a game called Forsaken. <laughs> it's probably not what you're thinking of. Forspoken. I don't think I've seen anything about that game. True, Zakoba. It does make it worse, but in a way it's kind of relieving that we now know what trash he is, you know? I don't know. I kind of feel that way. Whenever somebody, like if one of my friends gets cheated on or something, sometimes I'm like, good. Not because they broke your heart and all that, but because that's who they are. They have it in them to do that. They got it over with. At least you're out now, before it goes further down the line and you have more to lose out of this relationship, you know? It appears to be the Mokuro Ikasaba's profile. Yeah, looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko uh, stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room, along with the key. So is Forspoken also a um, Cthulhu-esque game? God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It was a key and blank. That's it. Well, that's right. He wouldn't tell us what else was stolen. That must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. Hmm. I don't have time for your sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Okay. I made an effort to pull myself together, then looked down at the profile sheet. Name, Mukuro Ikusaba. Sex, female. The ultimate soldier. This could be that body that was also burned that's not, maybe not uh, Kyoko. When it says ultimate soldier, this person did have a um, tattoo of like a wolf or something on their hand. It could be a military related thing. I don't know. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. You know, they were using the giant military bowie knife, so yeah, that could have been her. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over the Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information. She was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Interesting. Let's see, it follows the journey of Frey, a young New Yorker transported to the beautiful and cruel uh, land of Athia. In her search for a way home, Frey must use her newfound magical abilities to traverse a sprawling landscape and battle monstrous creatures. Oh, and it's an RPG. Kind of looks like it's based off the Dreamfall games. I have never played the Dreamfall games, but I've heard amazing things about them. They're definitely in my potential to stream in the future list. Why do people do that, Weebatome? It's so stupid. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, you know, a big chunk of the reason why people were so upset with, uh, you know, um, Last of Us 2. It's just so stupid. I don't get it. The Ultimate Soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in is like a completely different dimension. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are the reasons, but I guess, like... Why is it still so prevalent? Why are we growing as a society? Why can't we get over that hump? It's like one nonfiction and the other is sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. 
And a lot of people call call Mukuro Mukro the Pokemon as a joke. Oh, nice, Okoba. I never heard that. We actually just we just streamed my first Pokemon game just like a a month or two ago. That's funny. So that's how different this is. That's how I saw things just as an ordinary person. But then I see. I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard say that the Fenrir has already... Found it! Uh-oh. <laughs> now we're in trouble. Wow. I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player, and a bit player is becoming our hero. Ah, it's you. Wah -wah? Hmm? Uh, what have you got in your pretty little hand there? Uh-oh. You found her profile? So, what if I did? Hey! Don't freak Come out on, on me. Now. I'm not gonna hold that against you or anything. And in case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either. Even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted in the headmaster's room. That was uh, Sakura, who was already dead. <laughs> yeah, finally, something useful for Byakuya's rich knowledge. <laughs> and Phantasma. So that game's by Square Enix, and it makes you more interested in it. And you played the Dreamfall games a long time ago. There are some new ones. I heard they're really good. I miss Sakura. She was so cool. All you remember is the puzzle with a duck, and you also had a cute little robot gorilla in the second game. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I think they've got made like three or four of them. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. What? Are rule violations really so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Hmm. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication of, to organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. Uh oh, back my camera a little bit. There we go. I was trying to adjust my monitor, but uh, yeah, I think it's still a little bit off. How's that? Nope. There we go. I think that's good. <laughs> Looks like it's like just a little bit crooked. Let me see if I can fix this. I was trying to adjust my monitor, and I ended up hitting the camera stand right behind it. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. <laughs> oh, so you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well. Of course! Absolutely. I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is now, can I? <sighs> In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Oh, wait. Oh, now I actually have a big gap over here. <laughs> Let's see right in the eyes as I'm adjusting it right now. Actually, what I should be looking is at my monitor to get that portion just right. Okay, that's probably a little closer. <laughs> I probably need to tighten it down so it doesn't move as easily. Interesting. <laughs> it's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in the killing game. I mean, it's probably this hidden 16th student, right? I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking I should probably clarify that. Hey, um... When you all first got together in the main hallway back then, there were 15 people there, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. Oh, definitely. I haven't played Siberia yet either, Phantasma. I've heard those are good. Let's see. And they just came out with a new Siberia game, and you were surprised to see them come back. That's cool. I love it when these old franchises are coming back. You know, a game that blew my mind is they made a new Act Razor game. And that was one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. And they just made kind of a remaster, but kind of a reboot. It was pretty cool. Um, there were some changes I didn't like. Uh, it was way longer than it needed to be because they kind of padded some stuff out, but it was still really cool to see it come back. A misunderstanding. Are you saying? In other words. That's right. There, 
weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, indeed. The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16. We've kind of known that for a little while, about a, or rumors of a hidden 16th student. Mukuro Ikusaba. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> the 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. I'm excited to see when we see something about it, Phantasma. Like a gameplay trailer or something? I really want to see what it looks like. And uh, has Jayon ever played the Nancy Drew games? I did play one. Um, I think it was called like Deathwood Manor. What was it called? Blackmore Manor? Blackmore something? Curse of Blackmore? <laughs> I forget the subtitle. But yeah, um, Nate, Too Little Too Nate, one of our mods actually uh, requested that game a long time ago. It was super cool. Watch out for her. And being that it's kind of aimed at like younger kids, isn't it? I found it pretty difficult. I definitely needed some help. The 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of the school life. So the one making all the regulations is... Why? Huh? Huh? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Oh, well, because... <laughs> Like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I mean, that would have been useful information four trials ago, right? Those people kind of got screwed. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense? Well, now. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge? <laughs> I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigiri, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in and day out all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but... <laughs> she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> okay, now that's all you get. <laughs> okay, so covering scars on her hands? Um... I don't remember there being a bunch of scars on the hands of the dead body. We only mentioned um, the, the like tattoo and the weird fingernails, but I don't think he talked about scars. And Zakobo, you truly wish we could FTE the 16th student to get to know more about them in this game? Oh, that would be nice, because, yeah, they're not going to get to play the same game we do, huh? They haven't been to any trial. And it can't be any worse than the current KOTOR game. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's a little rough to go back to, Phantasma. I think it'd probably, I'd probably i be doing myself a favor by waiting for the new one. <laughs> Survey says, Akobo, that was a lie. And Alex, isn't it great the rules to miss trial? Oh, it should be against the rules to miss trials. That's true. So how's the secret student so special? Like, why, why are they not following the same rules as everybody else, right? That's a good point, Alex. I didn't think about that. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars? Wait, so on the back of her hand... The tattoo. Wait, but no. Monokuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears those gloves, to hide the scars. Which means... Those fake nails on the corpse. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Hm. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Ma Makuro was a student. That's right. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuro is the one creating the rules to the game. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves that Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Ah, that's why he was able to keep it a secret before. She wasn't involved with any of that stuff. Mukuro was related to the case? It's certainly possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. My guess is that is Mukuro and Kyoko killed her. What? Hmm. That would explain why we would have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, 
that would make her part of the school killing game. Mukuro is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? Hey, Sheely, how you doing, dude? Welcome. And the story in Kotor's Amazing Phantasma? The technology could definitely use an update. That is the quintessential reason why remakes exist, right? It's like you've got a great core, great story. We just need to update the fundamentals to make it easier for new people to get into. And every time someone's been late to a trial, Monokuma went and forced them to come. Oh, that's right. That did happen to Toko, huh, Zakobo? So you think maybe it isn't against the rules, but Monokuma would much rather have everyone attend. It's just for the ratings. That's my guess. Just for the ratings. In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Mukuro Ikusaba isn't the culprit. Huh? What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So in other words... Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense then to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mukuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, it definitely does seem possible, but if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places I'm in need of investigation. I should find out if the key and the dojo really are connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? Boom! We just teleported right to the dojo. Perfect. There's the lockers. Hmm. Hurry up and check the locker. That's what we're here for, after all. I should probably save it. <laughs> I feel like we've got a lot done. Oops. Wrong button. It's one thing I definitely don't do enough, is save it. Dang, how far are you, Sheely? How much longer do you think it's going to take you? I have no idea which locker it is. Oh, not the straw post. We already looked at that before. There we go. There are wooden lockers here. Hey, Michael, you made it, dude. How's it going? They use wood block keys, just like those at super traditional public bathrooms. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, do you see the locker farthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found in that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay. <laughs> and Byakuya is still a dick, but he's a lot more fun to talk to after Chapter 4's development for him. You know, yeah, he's kind of changing on our side a little bit, it feels like. He's the same, yet something feels distinctly different and more tolerable. Because now he's not trying to, like, fight us. It seems like he's more trying to fight Monokuma and the Mastermind. And Shili, plenty more hours. You still have to grind more to finish all the post game. Is that because like it's really tough battles you need to be high level for? So Michael, where we left right off for chapter five, a few major events. Our group found like a malfunctioning Monokuma. They tore it apart, found out there's a bomb inside every one of those robots, but there is more than one of those robots. So they thought they killed it, they did not. We found a dead body in the garden but it was stabbed in the chest when we first found it. When we went back later, it had been blown up. We can't see the face, we can't tell who it is. So we're not sure if it's Kyoko or this like mystery 16th person or somebody else, I don't know, but that's who we're thinking it is. And right now we're kind of doing our investigation to try to figure all that out. And he told you his theory for Mukuro not being the culprit or mastermind, when before he had a theory that he'd refuse to tell you so you could reveal it to himself later. And that's true. He used to retain and bogart much more information, Sikobo. So he's even being more helpful in general. Sometimes he would only do that during the trials. All right, so we put the key in. The locker eagerly accepted the key, and it opened. So, Michael, really, we're a little bit worried right now that Kyoko might be dead. I'm hoping not. 
There are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. Hmm. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Yeah, I mean, because it's a robot, Michael, I guess they could just make a whole bunch of them. Of course, without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. A wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what that was used for. Is that a blood on it? Is that a blood stain? I see. If it is, that means it surely must be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow? But how could it possibly be involved? The plot thickens, huh? <laughs> so, Sheila, you are at a high enough level where the grinding against normal enemies would just take hours to level up a couple times? Oh, so you gotta, like, fight the toughest guys possible. <laughs> That's no fun. Uh, the only game, JRPG, I remember doing a lot of grinding on was Final Fantasy VII. And I did everything you could do in that game. I've spent... I don't know how many hours, 100 hours, maybe even more than 100 hours, but I destroyed that game. Is something wrong? Very strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... The Akia? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue to the next location. Oh, you were doing so close with giving me more help. <laughs> huh, what's what next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. What's kind of funny is because we don't have Kyoko with us, Byakia kind of is our next best detective to help us. Fenrir, you mean the mercenary group that Mukuro was part of? But how are we supposed to find out about that? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research on something? Research. Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kinds of info that the general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. True. He doesn't want to share until he's 100% certain. Yeah. Hmm. And there's special enemies in Nino Kuni that have a low spawn rate. They run away if you don't kill them fast enough, but they give you a lot of money and XP. Hopefully you're strong enough just to kill them real quick every time. And hey, young daddy, how you doing? Um, Byakia's history is not great. Fourth trial and oh yeah. Well, I guess fifth trial we're about to start, young daddy. But yeah, he was way off in that fourth trial. And he doesn't want for himself as the esteemed Byakia to give a wrong theory without thinking about it. That's true. That's true. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. True. Yeah, that just seems like it, it's like trying to waste your time, Shiri, in a way. Um, Byakia seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to a shelf in the back. Hmm. Ah, uh, here we go. He quickly returned with a file in hand. I see. Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? Um, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. <laughs> well, not at his high school. <laughs> well, whatever. I'll read it for you. But I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? <laughs> Isn't that kind of extreme? Do I have to read a hundred pages to you? <laughs> yeah, unless it's a French school. Mm, Touché. Is that French? <laughs> Touche? Um, Fenrir, or Fenrir is the elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military, military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct conflict. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Fenrir, Wolf of, the Wolf of Ragnarok, their mere presence is enough to strike fear in the enemy. That was totally her then, because of the tattoo on the hand. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified, which makes me think Kyoko's still alive. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized, 
Rumors indicate that they were killed to keep from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe there was mounting internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. What? What is it? All this sounds just like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. That's kind of scary. Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. <laughs> yes, Byakia is definitely getting friendlier, Michael. <laughs> little by little. And Sheely, here's me who knows some Norse mythology. Hey, that's fantastic knowledge. <laughs> that's fun. So, did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it, the report says something about the name Fenrir comes from, right? Yeah, this is talking about the, um, the wolf and stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my d Elegant. Frost, welcome Raiders to John Cadia. Uh, how are you doing, Frost? And welcome everybody to the stream. Let me give you a uh, shout out real quick. What were you playing, Frost? How was your stream? Let's see, that is not a command, John. There we go. You were working on Baldur's Gate 2. Oh, nice. Wait, were you playing the first Baldur's Gate last time um, we chatted? Maybe you've already finished that and moved on to the second one. How are you liking it so far? I loved both those Baldur's Gate games. You know, 2 was definitely the better game, for sure. <laughs> Blow them all up! Why, monkey, why? Okay, you did finish it last month. Nice, I remember you were working on the first one. Did you play the um, expansion to that? There, it might have already came with the version of the game you had, but there was a an expansion to the first one called like Tales of the Sword Coast or something like that. And I think there's also an expansion to Baldur's Gate 2, The Throne of Ball, which I remember being really good. But oh, I'm glad you are enjoying it. I really like Baldur's Gate 2 a lot. And, you know, now that I think about it, I think last time we chatted, you were already working on Baldur's Gate 2 because you mentioned how you liked the, uh, the story with the other characters a bit more. You can kind of see how they went into Mass Effect and uh, Dragon Age after that. Kind of like those like side characters that have their own quests and stories and you get closer to them. I really like that mechanic. Well, thank you so much for the raid. We are getting deep, deep into our game here. We... Uh, we, we found a dead body. We're not sure who it is exactly. I have a, I have a strong opinion on it, though. And uh, we're really just, like, about to start the trial pretty soon here. <laughs> yeah, bomb rain! And Fenrir is from Norse mythology? Oh, that's cool, Sheely. And knowing some very specific parts of Norse mythology makes it... Uh, a lot of stuff makes sense. But you won't elaborate because of spoilers. Oh, good. True. <laughs> Might be good to keep that to yourself, Sheely. <laughs> So yeah, something about where the word Fenrir comes from. That's right. It said Fenrir is the wolf of Ragnarok. Ragnarok, there's Norse. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Like their hand, like we saw in that dead body. So you did some of the DLC content, it seems, but it looks like the content they dispersed throughout the map. Yeah, I forget how it was set up, Frost. It wasn't like a, you beat the main game, here's the expansion. It seems like you can kind of do it all at the same time, if I remember correctly. Oh, do you know some Norse stuff too, Monkey? That's awesome. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean? Oh yeah, we know what that means. Oh, it's time for the trial. That was quick. That was probably one of the quickest, uh... What do you call time it? Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us. Organisms. The Earth. Natural phenomena. That was like our quickest detective period ever. Yes, yes, Frost. Yeah, because that, that woman had a wolf tattooed on her hand, which makes me strongly believe it is not Kyoko, which makes me very happy. So... Hmm. I mean, what makes the most sense to me, young daddy, is that Kyoko killed, I can't think of her name, but whoever this, you know, 16th student is, even though we've heard the name a hundred times before, I've already forgotten it. I think she was trying to kill us, the 16th student, and then Kyoko killed her, drug the body out of our room, 
and made it look like it happened in the garden, you know, so that nothing would be pinned on us, essentially. But if it is Kyoko that did the murdering, we're all kind of screwed because um, if we don't kill Kyoko, which I would hate to do, then we're all going to die. So I'm hoping somebody else did it, but I'm not sure who else might have. <laughs> Maybe it's me. I don't have any tattoos, actually. <laughs> Nowhere on my body. Ah, the things fantasy games teach you. You know, my little brother learned most of his reading from video games. He started playing RPGs from a very young age. He had a very high reading level for uh, his year in school. You did say you think Kyoko is the killer, which means they'll be executed. Yeah, I know exactly, Zokobo. I would hate that. And according to Byakuya, uh, literally everyone but you and Kyoko have airtight alibis. So that's a bit worrying. It's, it's just one of us, right? Ugh. Yeah, so they've kind of just introduced it now, Michael. They've talked about it briefly before, I think, but not very much. So yeah, there's another student who might also be the mastermind of this place. He wrote all the rules and everything. And she's like a 16 student that was hidden away in one of those dorm rooms. We've never seen her, though. It damages us little by little until the end. <laughs> you should really think about that. I mean, doesn't everybody have a Fenrir tramp stamp, Sheely? Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. The only tattoos I might ever get in my life are maybe when the dogs pass. I might get like a tattoo to remember them. You know, like one of their little dog paws or something like that. So... Please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. I think tattoos look cool. There's just not much I really want to put on my body forever, I guess. But that's <laughs> something I could definitely have. Um, then the time has come. All we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the class trials. I mean, you're right, Weepatome. <laughs> Dogs never pass. We don't have to worry about that. They live forever. That's right. It would seem that way. Let's go. Yeah, that's the biggest shame is why do dogs not live to be a hundred? Why, why, why do we have to outlive them, you know? Or any pets for that matter. Unless you get a turtle, then it will probably outlive you. Okay, I'm going to save it again for reasons. <laughs> that's that's an airtight alibi, Zakobo. I like it. Uh, whoa. Byakuya and Makoto showed up together. Oh. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. Hm. We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? <laughs> oh. True Phantasma, sorry. Um... M Makoto ranked high enough for you guys to go off together? Just the two of you? Don't worry, Toko. We're not going to take your man. You're all right. Huh? What? Are you jealous? Hey. Or are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? Yep. That's, that is, that's a very solid tattoo. That's like pretty much the only kind of tattoo I would get, Phantasma. <laughs> oh, really? You go, well, when, when you get into fandom, anything's game, right? Okay, good, good, fantastic. Okay, good. Yeah, but not, that'd be a fantastic tattoo idea. What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second. He could show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for five minutes, waiting for something weird to happen. I bet nothing's starting because Kyoko's not here. And then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be... Maybe he died again? Hmm. Uh, what should we do? Should we keep waiting here, or...? <laughs> there he is. Or what? 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 Did I scare you? Come on. I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Ah, Byakuya. Classic Byakuya. Is it really Zakoba? I would not have thought that. That's pretty cool. Although I guess now that we're kind of being more chummy together, it kind of makes sense. And first place being with Kyoko and the other one competing with Byakuya for second place being... Oh man, it goes deep. It goes deep. And Phantasma, your phone is torturing me. It keeps spinning. Oh, 
That's got to be brutal. Turn that crap off. Phantasma, maybe for a little while anyway, because yeah, it loves to be like, hey, what were you doing a year ago? And then it shows you all these like fun things. You're like, oh, why phone? Why? <laughs> it's just Makoto cross everybody. <laughs> hmm? What? I made you wait? You've got it backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words, I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till anyone's he everyone's here. Now can we? Yep, see, we're missing Kyoko. Huh? What are you talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> but I've been waiting 10 minutes now. So if it's okay, oh, so it's okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? If we all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange a punishment right now. Uh-oh, what's going on? True. I mean, that's... If it makes, like, little animations and stuff, Phantasmal, you definitely want it to save those. Yeah, that's that's a good point. But if you ever want to, I, I'm pretty sure you can turn those features off. If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. When I heard that voice, we all spun around to look. Hey. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. All this music... Just makes you so happy to see it, doesn't it? I'm here, and no rule's been broken. Kyoko, ah. you're still alive. <laughs> uh, that's a g -g -g ghost. <sighs> Stop talking. Hmm. If you want to fight, do it in the class trial. You need to save some of the fun for later, right? What? What would be nice is if it could, like, just not advertise it to you right now, Phantasma, but still do it in the background, you know? That would be cool. I don't know if that's a thing. It might be, honestly. I, I'm sure a lot of other people have gone through the same kind of mindset of like, oh, I like it, but I don't want to see it immediately. But is it okay that there's no particular penalty for being late? Is that right? I made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate? Am I wrong? Yeah. You're so selfish, so spoiled. Oh no, weep at home, I'm scared. <laughs> You're right. There's no penalty officially, but I bet you'll be sorry later. Shing. No, I'll make sure you're sorry later. <laughs> anyway, hustle your butts into the elevator. I'll be just one step ahead of you. When Monokuma was gone, we all rushed up to Kyoko. Kyoko? Ah. So, you really didn't die. Indeed. Of course I didn't die. <laughs> Thank God. I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> Perhaps. But that's not necessarily a good thing for us. Huh? Uh, he's right. Now we gotta deal with a ghost. A oh, hero. Your dumbness knows no bounds. It's insane. I told you, stop talking. I think you're giving Toko a headache. Let's go. Come on, let's just go. Whatever we need to discuss, we could do it during the trial. Without ever looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuya stepped into the elevator. <laughs> Multiple brain slugs, Akobo. Master, wait for me. Uh, um. Uh, good call. Who knows what might happen to us if we take too long. But... I'll be happy when this trial is all over. After uh, One after another, everyone piled into the elevator. <laughs> yeah, please just don't talk, hero. But I... I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Listen, before we get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? So... Correct. I went to investigate the second floor dorms. The second floor? That's right. There aren't any monitors or cameras there, so I was able to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course, I also missed his announcement because of that. Ooh. I had no idea a body had been discovered. Then when did you find out? So... Just now. I finished my search and came back down, just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over the crime scene first. I can't go to a trial completely uninformed, can I? So that's why you were late. However... I'm sorry I kept you all waiting. But if you were on the second floor of the dorms... Then that's, then that's what the key you found goes to? Wrong. Actually, 
To be precise, not quite. In other words... I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open up any lock in the school. What? Secret tool, huh? <laughs> True that, Sheely. She is about as pale as a ghost, right? Just a second! Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma. Makoto. We can go all the details after we go through the trial, okay, Makoto? Assuming you survived the trial. Did you do it, Kyoko? Right now, I just want to focus on surviving our current situation. It would seem... Because this is probably the single most crucial moment for me, or so far for me. Or her? That's a strange way to put it. The trial, the class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would she say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well, if that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? Being the last one left, I stepped into the elevator. And the doors slid shut. Gosh. And then there were six. Seven, maybe. Well, no, six, because that other body dies. We're about to lose another one. At least. This time, the clinking was loud enough to hurt my ears, and the dread began to consume me once again. I can't imagine ever getting used to the mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, nobody said a word. We just stood there, silent and still. Are you ready for the, uh, the classic trial poem that we hear every time? After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light or penetrated every depth of my eyes. <laughs> that was perfect. Not only will you hear this like little poem we hear every time, you'll get it auto-tuned. I love it. I love it. Okay, make sure this is working. Do we have auto-tune? Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Okay. But it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. <laughs> this is great. It was the blinding light of despair. Here it comes. I can't wait! I can't wait! Uh, I've been waiting for this. It feels like forever since we've gotten together like this. The time for pointless jokes and jabs has passed. Thrills, chills, kills! Let's get on with the show. <laughs> And so, the curtain opened for the fifth time. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly fate. A deadly class trial. <laughs> Should we do auto-tune whenever Monokuma talks? You know, every once in a while, I will actually use like a special voice for a character. Like, I've used robot voices before. I've used like this crazy serial killer voice before for like a demon or something. So it just depends. But auto tune for Monokuma. <laughs> That's great. Hell yeah, I want to save it. Now, in the background, I'm still doing my voices. So, you know, you'll get to hear different auto tune versions of each character. Although we do have a lot of reading right here with all the clues. Okay. So let's go over all the clues before we jump into this. So on the um, Monokuma's file of the actual thing, due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. So the bomb did not kill them. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. So it sounds like they got beat up too. And the explosion has burnt the upper half of the body beyond recognition. The upper half of the body remained on fire and had to be extinguished. Because of this, the upper half was soaking wet while the bottom half remained dry. Could be something weird there because there was also sprinklers going off. The body was wearing notably long fake nails. The body had a tattoo of a dog on the back of the right hand, making me think it's that 16th student. There were bits of charred debris near the body. It should be noted that the bomb, which had been removed from Monokuma in the gym, had disappeared. So that could be part of the bomb. The sprinklers are programmed to come on every morning at 7.30, and this time is impossible to change. As such, it could be assumed that if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, it would have gotten wet. 
7 a.m. Makoto wakes uh, to the morning announcement after we were sick. 7.30, Makoto and Hina arrive at the dining hall. 7.30 to 9, Makoto meets the others in the gym and head and together they head to the headmaster's room. 9 a.m., Toko is told to find the pickaxe in the garden where she discovers the body. Hmm. Maybe Toko's the most guilty. It's really weird that she just discovered the body on her trip to get the pickaxe, right? The knife found near the body was the same knife that was used to stab it before the explosion. It is also the same knife that Toko had given Makoto for safekeeping, and the knife that the masked assailant was holding when they attacked Makoto. And then there's the tarp. The tarp was hidden among the other items in the tool shed. One side was wet and filthy with mud and grime. The other side was completely dry and clean. And then the chickens. And the number of chickens in the coop had decreased from five to four. Yes, a hero claims that there were no doubt, or there was without a doubt five chickens just before nighttime last night. And yet, and yet, oh my goodness, Jib Butt Kiss. A wonderful name. How's it going, Jib? Thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream, Jib? What were you playing? Let me give you a shout out here in just a moment. I really appreciate raiding the vocoder. You know, somebody just redeemed me being auto-tuned for five minutes. I don't always do this, but this is what happens. The giblets are here. Now, when I see giblets, I, I always think of like Doom or Quake or one of those games where when you can blow up enemies, they kind of explode everywhere. That's really weird. Oh, it just disappeared. Oh, that was from the video, from the follow. Speaking of which, um, Sav Monarch, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Okay, let me give you that shout out, I promised. There we go. You were playing some League of Legends. How did that go, dude? Did you have some good games? This is weird. I have never played any kind of MOBA. I guess I technically played the first MOBA back when it was just a Warcraft 3 mod, but Dota, Dota 2, um, League of Legends, Heroes of the Swarm, any of those games. I've never played any of them. How do you like it, though? How'd you do? <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I appreciate that. And uh, Sheely, you mean if you went to the garden to get something in the garden and there was a corpse in the garden, I'd probably discover the corpse. Well, you would, Sheely, but you also could have created the corpse, right? <laughs> we, we let you out of our sight. And it was great. You had some great games. You won a few, but had a blast. That's cool. Hey, as long as you had a good time, that's the most important part, right? Oh, I think it's over. And you're not great, but your friends are really skilled, so they help a ton. Anytime I play multiplayer. All I'm doing is being carried every single time. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Well, thank you again so much for the raid. I appreciate that. Have you ever played this game that we're playing, Danganronpa? It's essentially a anime, visual novel, murder house detective game where we're in some kind of game show and the purpose is to kill your uh, fellow classmate students without getting caught. If you can kill somebody and they think it's somebody else, then you get off scot-free and you get out. But if you find the right killer, then they get executed and you move on. It is crazy. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, dude. Let me swap over here and you get to see my puppies. Jib butt kiss with the gift sub to Sav Monarch. That's so nice of you, dude. Thank you so very much. Let me drop some tokens in there. And for everybody new to the channel, um, those little characters you see at the bottom of the screen, those are uh, everybody that um, follows the channel gets a little avatar and you can use them to collect those tokens that we drop in stream. You just type exclamation point jump in the chat. Yes, exactly. You nailed it, Monarch. And um, you can use the tokens to play sound effects in the stream. You can customize your avatar. We use them for giveaways. You can also save up a whole bunch of tokens and actually request the next game that we stream. So that's actually why we're playing the game that we're playing right now. This is actually a viewer request. So. You know, actually, the next three games we're playing are all viewer requests, <laughs> so it's definitely possible. It just takes some persistence. That's cool. So you've never played it, but it looks interesting. It's really cool. I don't play a lot of uh, visual novels off of stream, but the community loves them and they request them, so I get to enjoy them. It's all good. Nice catch, Young Daddy and Weebatome. You got two Weebatome in one jump. Good job. Okay, so right now we're just kind of going over all the evidence before we start the trial. I really have no idea who killed... Uh, this person yet so there was a chicken coop it used to have five chickens now it has four 
Why is that important? I'm not sure yet. And then Byakuya stated that there was no corpse in the garden just after nighttime last night, so it can be assumed that the murder must have taken place sometime after that. Byakuya also said that Yasuhiro, Toko, and Hina were in the gym the entire night, and none of them were alone at that point. So basically what that means is they all have an alibi. The only people that don't have an alibi are us and Kyoko. It can't be us, right? And I'd, it'd break my heart if Kyoko was guilty. The corpse had a mask covering its head and a white jacket covering the body. A knife had been thrust into the abdomen and there were blood stains around the wound. The body had stopped bleeding, but the blood was still wet. See, now that's kind of weird. Why was the blood not dry? That makes me think maybe that blood wasn't actually the corpse's blood. Maybe it was chicken blood. It was noted, however, that there was no blood on the ground around the body. That's kind of weird. Maybe because somebody poured chicken blood on it. Um, Mukuro Ikusaba, female, known as the ultimate soldier. She became obsessed with the military from a young age. She disappeared while on vacation in Europe and then reappeared in Japan three years later. Apparently, every member of Fenrir gets a tattoo somewhere on the body to represent their membership in the group, which that makes me believe this... What was her name again? I never remember it. Mukuro Ikusawa was actually the person that was killed. Obviously, it wasn't uh, Kyoko, so we, at least we know who the victim is. Apparently, the killing game began with 16 participants, all students. It is assumed that Mukuro Ikusaba was the 16th student. Monokuma also revealed that the reason Kyoko wears gloves is to hide something she doesn't want anyone to see. He was I think he said scars. This woodblock decoration was found in Kyoko's room. It looks like it actually is the key to one of the lockers in the dojo, which it was. A set of titanium arrows was found in the dojo locker. There appeared to be 10 in total. Along with the arrows, there was also a wadded up ball of duct tape in the locker. The duct tape had traces of blood on it. It is assumed that this is related to the case, but nobody can imagine how. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened, young daddy? Kyoko used Monokuma's secret tool, which grants access to any room in the school, to sneak into the second floor of the dorms. This area seems to have no monitors or security cameras. See, Kyoko's been gone for so long. I don't know, her story is starting to sound really shady. Okay, that was it. That was all the clues. All right, I think... Oh, we have to add some skills. Do we have any more skills to add? Can't afford that one. It steadies your aim a little bit. You know what? I think I'm going to keep what I have. I think we'll uh, save our skills for right now. So I think we're done. We're ready to finish the preparations and get started on this trial. All rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. This is one of my favorite parts of the game because I actually get a break from talking all the time. Not talking, but reading and doing voices. For whatever reason, just the trials are completely voiced. Not the rest of the game, but just the trials. So, you get a little bit of a breather, which is nice. And Michael, you have strong feelings it's Kyoko, but I'm really hoping it's not. Same. I would hate to lose her. She's been such a good friend through this whole thing. And like, probably my favorite character, except for uh, probably Sakura and Chihiro was cool too. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. And the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. You know, it's kind of weird that they go through the spiel every time. But at the same time, when I'm streaming the game, that's perfect when new people drop in, they get all the rules. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. Oh my god, hero. <laughs> Kyoko's like right there. Does he still think it's a ghost? Oh, Kyoko, you're so special. You're just, you're just so dang special. But Kyoko's standing right there. <laughs> no, that's a ghost! But she has legs and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's a definite hero moment. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology. 
Can we just like, I wish we could just blame Hero. Sadly, you gotta put one down. But if he isn't actually the murderer, then we all get killed. So it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. <laughs> how do we know she's not being impersonated? There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Thank you, Byakia. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse is in Kyoko, right? That uh, shouldn't be hard to do. Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Or rather, let's compare the traits of somebody we do know that exists that's not Kyoko to the body. How about that? Her traits? <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, hero, shut up. So one important trait Kyoko has that proves the body doesn't belong to her. I'm going to say it is the gloves because um, Kyoko always wears gloves, but this dead person did not have gloves on. And she also had some crazy long fingernails, which you wouldn't be able to put gloves on anyway. I think that's what it's asking me for. I got it. I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. Oh, she doesn't want to share that. And would you happen to know the answer? Yeah, I think I do. In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh, that's probably true. Oh, you know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? Imagine a team of just hero and Hina working together. <laughs> They'd be out immediately. First trial. They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. Thanks, Hero. You're adding a lot to this trial. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. <laughs> Can we just like hearsay and like, you know, ban him from saying anything more? There's no way that corpse was Kyoko. But if I can't prove why, we're going to be stuck here and the case won't move forward. So I don't have any other choice but to. All right, here comes our argument. So tattoo on the right hand, exploded body analysis and fake nails. I think it's going to be fake nails. But Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion? Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. No, that's yeah, not. Yeah, I think that's it. You could technically wear gloves with nails, but it depends on the gloves, no. right? There's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. You'd have to have real long gloves to fit those long nails. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal. Oh, to the moon. And uh, the pillars look trippy. Oh, it looks so cool, young daddy. I love the style. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? Only two. I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Is this like the O.J. Simpson case all over again? <laughs> if the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Everybody just wants destruction to poor Hiro. I don't blame you. I'm right there with you. Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. Like ghosts? If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. <laughs> well, well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Uh-huh. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. It's so sad that we're even doing this part of the trial. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. <laughs> Thank you, Byakia. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. I'm scared it's going to come back again. Like, we're going to run into, like, a problem where we're not sure where to go, and he's going to go, ghost. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. <laughs> Before anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts from there. I, I mean, it's... I always forget the, her name, but we know who it is. I think it's going to be tattoo on right hand is the important thing here. 
Kyoko really <laughs> is still alive. It hurts our brain cells, doesn't and it? Who died? There's got to be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Oh, we got a little bit of a well, description. if we can't identify the body... Then oh, there's nothing else we I can missed do, it. Right? I think that was the right one. I just barely missed it. The one thing that can tell us was on the victim's own body. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's got to be some way to figure it out. Oh, I did he actually so. say that himself, Shili? That's wild. I don't remember that. If we can't there we go. No, that's wrong. <laughs> there was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. Frost, there's a lot of similarities between those two characters. <laughs> a lot. They're... What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Chill out, Toko. A cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. Careful, hero. It might make another ghost. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? That just sounded so out of place. They don't swear. Oh, I guess they do swear. Um, what's his name? Swore all the time. She doesn't swear a lot, though. Seriously? They really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Although she is really into that submissive thing, isn't she? Okay, so we need the report. Here it is. The I believe the Ik Mukuro Ikusaba's profile is going to be it. Because that talks about the um, hand tattoo. I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad... <laughs> we need a big bonk hammer for Toko. ...would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir is... Oh, and then we get to uh, just type it out. Four letters. Wolf. Okay. That was a tough one, guys. You know I wasn't I sure if I was going to make it in time. <laughs> that was so much easier than every other one we've done. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world-ending wolf beast. We've done like, I don't know, four of those? And they've all been like much longer. And I actually had like, oh, what word are they looking for? Not that one. He's the child of the trickster god, Loki. And a female giant. Man. After all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. A wolf tattoo. And that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. Ta-da! Not Kyoko. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Now that's a really weird twist to this whole thing, isn't it? Oh, I, I almost didn't catch that, Zakobo. Yeah, she didn't really stutter hardly at all there, huh? <laughs> yeah, that just means she loves wolves. <laughs> yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What? Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a cool ass trial? I mean, if the mastermind's dead, why can't we just leave? Come on, we can get to the mastermind's control room, right? Who's gonna stop us now? No, it means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. Dang it. <laughs> but I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. 
Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. And what do they say in that profile? It was like the ultimate military or something like that? All it said was that she was the soldier. ultimate soldier. That's what it was. If I remember correctly, that other information came from Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means Kyoko got it wrong? Dun dun dun. And who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? Unless she was doing that on purpose to kind of like, you know, put us on the wrong trail. She's been gone this whole time. And when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. <laughs> Is that breaking the fourth wall? So you're saying she wasn't an important character, which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. He looks so pissed. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! I don't know if that all seemed pretty, you know, important. Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. And Ghosty Libra, how are you doing, Ghosty? You're in this game a lot. At least that's what Hero believes. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for the follow. And Jib, seriously, it definitely gets intense. It gets really tricky when um, you're trying to like fight an argument, find a contradiction, and it's not clear. Like, luckily, so far this one's been pretty straightforward. But there's times where it's like, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna throw out guesses, and you can only make so many guesses until you lose. So it gets very tricky. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. The hell? Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Yeah, so Jib, this game started with uh, 15 main characters, and now we're down to like five. What sucks is anybody I claim is like, oh, that's my favorite character. They get killed. Okay, now that's my favorite character. They get killed. <laughs> so now I'm just hoping it's not Kyoko that gets killed next. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Yeah, I mean, that would just make sense to keep the game going. Can't be somebody we couldn't possibly know who they were, right? <laughs> Seriously, Ghosty. And have you played this game before, Ghosty? You a big fan of uh, Danganronpa? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along. I don't think so. I think they told us the truth when they were 16. Nope. There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events. Seriously? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? Oh, nice. Yeah, I've never played one of these before, Ghosty. This is my first time trying one out. I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Oh, Chihiro's story was so sad, Crystal, so sad. Based on what we know, there can only be two suspects. Now, everybody's going to say Makoto and Kyoko. At least that's what he said before. So I think that's the correct answer here. But I don't know. There was that one time when they sent Toko to go get the pickaxe. And then she discovered the dead body, right? With a knife. So I'm kind of leaning that way too. But I'm going to say this. I got it. You've narrowed it down to Kyoko and me, right? And we have to watch uh, Chihiro suffer twice. That was so sad. Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. 
Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. Doesn't mean they weren't already dead, just means there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. Oh, she didn't like that. That was weird. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. So the only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it. I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear my name. Um... I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Oh no, what are we gonna say? Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. <laughs> like, we can't do it ourselves. Ah, help the little kid do it. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, yeah. That was, I mean, it was so much like self-sacrifice, too. Sakura's was really sad. Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? When she went to go get the pickaxe. That's a little fishy. So what time was the body discovered? I think she said it was like right at like 9 o'clock. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. Okay, go get the pickaxe and be back here by 9.01. Which is like He's impossible. Right. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. That's a big gap of time. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh yeah! Right around 7.30! I remember checking right before I went in. So I'm totally sure about it. So just for characters in the first game, uh, Ghosty, which is your favorite? Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. The murder happened between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m., and I don't have an alibi from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Okay then, it looks like the game has begun. If I can't provide an alibi for that time period, then I have to prove the murder didn't happen during the time I don't have an alibi. That's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> the Sprinkles? Is that your favorite character, Monkey? <laughs> oh, Celeste. I, haven't, I forgot about her. We haven't seen her in a long time. And Chihiro, too. There's a lot of good characters. To do that, I have to make it clear when the body ended up in the garden. I think the body was moved there. Are they kind of giving us some clues about that, possibly? Okay, we've got sprinklers, the body analysis, and fragments near the dead body. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, that sounds okay. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Oh, yeah, good night, Jib. Thank you so much again for the raid. You have a good one, dude. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Hmm. There's something that happens in the garden at the same time every morning. The sprinklers! Thinking back, the corpse was almost totally dry. In which case, I should be able to figure out when the body must have appeared in the garden. After 7.30. 
We've established a time frame for the murder. I guess that'd be exploded body it analysis. Somewhere between 10 o'clock or just sprinklers. Night. Maybe just sprinklers. And 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. once it shows 7 And Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. Right there. No, that's not it. Okay. Come on, Makoto. Don't scare me like that. Makes me think something weird is going on. Shoot. We've established a time frame for the murder. It took or place the dead body analysis because it's dry. Night. Maybe that's what they're going for. In the morning. Yep. And yeah, from to 7 30. No, that's not it either. What are they asking me for? Shoot! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> oh, I We've forget that I can take theirs the and use them. I always get confused with some it of these took mechanics. Place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Would that be useful, though? Yep. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. Like, you could take this. That's more than enough time to I don't know if that's life, useful, though. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would be the time. Now, what's the clue that they give us? There's something that happens in the garden at the same time every morning. Thinking back, the corpse was almost totally dry. In which case, I should be able to figure out when the body must have appeared in the garden. I really thought there would have been sprinklers at 7.30 or the body analysis at 7.30, right? We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep. And Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. There's yeah, the fragments near the dead body. I don't think that's it. To 7.30. That's more than enough time to commit murder, I should think. So, Makoto, if you have any objections, now would Maybe I need time. to use it at the 10 o'clock one? Let's see. We've I'll, established I'll try to use sprinklers in the, the beginning. Murder. It took place somewhere between... That was it? No, that's wrong. I wouldn't have thought that. Okay, how does he gonna explain this? <laughs> Maybe I was thinking about it wrong. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. Oh, see, I was thinking it had to be just more associated with the time when it starts, but... And what makes you say that? I guess this does make sense. Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on. I remember this part perfectly. It makes sense, but I kind of thought 7.30 was the more important part, not the 10 p.m., you know? The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. But it kind of works either way, I guess. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Only half the body was dripping wet. Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words! <laughs> the what? <laughs> Wait, what? The mouth down south was wet? Whoa, where? I need like an actual physical bonk hammer. I could just pull out like Thor and just smash. That's ridiculous. The mouth down south was wet. I've never heard that terminology before. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm talking about, Toko. No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. <laughs> Poor Makoto. Oh god, no, that's not what I'm talking about. What do you mean by denying the sprinkler? Are you trying to deny my entire existence? <laughs> yeah, right. Mur Toko murdered by Justice Hammer. I like it. Man, you're totally wacko. Bonked to death. You know, Frost, it was, it was a brilliant translation issue. I love it. <laughs> the mouth down south. If you really wow. think it wasn't the sprinkler. It kind of worked in its favor. You know, you get that weird, like, English translation. I love it. You'd better tell us why. It's not bad. It's just so... Awkward and weird. It's kind of funny. I need to prove that it wasn't the sprinklers that got the body wet. All I have to do is hit Toko with certain evidence, and that should do it. If we look at the body itself, that should make it clear. I think it's just the fact that only half of it. 
Oh, it's this scene. I'm terrible at these. Nothing. I hate you. No, no, no. I don't know anything. Hold on. Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no, no. I don't know anything. Hold on. Especially when it gets fast. I have a hard time with this. Actually, when it hides the buttons, then I have a really hard time. No, no, no! I don't know anything! How can you say it was this should prove it? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. Yeah, so Alex, I'm gonna have to assume that when they say mouth down south, you know, they're, they're talking about a, a particular female genitalia part is what it's referring to. I've just never heard it used like that. <laughs> it might just be a weird translation issue. <laughs> yeah, just immediately po point to Toko. She did it. <laughs> yeah, right. So, couple, or you could say that. Or you could say, just go right to the point. Go real blunt. <laughs> The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. It, it just might have been a really creative way of saying it, we would tell. <laughs> just, I don't know, caught me off guard, I guess. Oh, Ghosty, have a if good the night. Thank you for joining the body us. Wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? Mm-hmm, that would make sense. So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a fertile maniac! <laughs> what? I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. That doesn't even make sense. The reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Yep. Well, you know what that means, everybody. We just have to start using that in our general lexicon, right? <laughs> we need to adopt that terminology. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please, John, no. Let's never speak of this again. So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. Now, Frost, do you really not want me to talk about it again? Or do you want me to create and approve an emote for that? Because we can do that too. <laughs> Forsaken Kraken. Welcome, Raiders, to John Cadia. How are you doing, Forsaken? It is great to see you, buddy. Let me drop. <laughs> That's a perfect response to that elegant. I love it. Let's see here. Can we bonk John? <laughs> you absolutely can. <laughs> nice. Oh, you were doing some dead by daylight. How did it go? Uh, were you uh, the killer most of the time or were you mostly survivor? I finally played that game for the first time uh, late last year. It was a lot of fun. Although I didn't have any of the DLC, so it seemed like we ran into repetition pretty quickly. <laughs> nice frost your channel's ready for when i get banned it won't take long i just gotta make it real obtuse so you can't tell what it is right away you know <laughs> and chaining expert welcome how are you doing um yeah i love how much dlc they have for dead by daylight though they have like silent hill resident evil texas chainsaw massacre nightmare on elm street they got everything in that game it's really cool playing with other people that do have the DLC and seeing all their stuff. It's so much fun. But yeah, trial's going good. So far, we haven't made too many terrible mistakes, although I don't know who did it yet. We're still kind of figuring all that out. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. We just kind of proved that we were not near the body when it could have been killed, but unfortunately, that kind of incriminates Kyoko. And I'm scared that she did it. I don't think she did, but I'm scared that she did. In which case, there goes my other favorite character. 
Let's see. And you don't think there's a way to play with friends and randoms and be the killer? So it's been survivor round out. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because otherwise you could just totally cheese the other players, right? And that wouldn't be very fair. That makes sense, because yeah, when I did play with friends, we were always survivors. So yeah, that does make a lot of sense. I, I'd be down for that, Crystal. Let's get, get rid of Byakuya. I'm 100% on that board. So Kyoko is the only one without an alibi, which would mean that Mukuro's killer is... No, I refuse to believe it. Kyoko murdered someone? That's... I'd just like to say one thing. Oh god, don't confess. Don't tell me you did it. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Well, I mean, that's kind of irrelevant because if we vote for you and you didn't do it, we're all dead, right? Which is why I can't let that happen. Huh? So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. Good, good. I feel better now. I feel better. However, I'm slightly worried now that it's Hina. Hina's probably my second favorite character out of this group that's still alive. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? <laughs> well, I mean, previously it was always somebody else. Maybe they, he's trying to spice it up, right? Maybe he's trying to spice it up. So, um, Forsaken, in that game, which is your favorite of the villains to play as when you do get to play as a villain? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? That's true, Frost. The only one that makes sense to me besides Kyoko is um, Toko, because she wanted to go get the uh, pickaxe and then found the body, right? <clears throat> and being suspected is the worst position to be in. Uh, because right or wrong, they vote you, you die. That's true, young daddy. And then everybody's dead if they get the wrong one. Shut up, you. You got it, boss. Shutting up now. <laughs> anyway, Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? Wait, what reason would she have had? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. Oh, that's true. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial, something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So that was her motive? That would be interesting. Although I'm, I'm led to believe Kyoko when she says I didn't do it. <laughs> Michael, you're blaming me. If she had a motive and no alibi, well then, I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's got to be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Hmm. Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. The tarp, right? Okay, so the tarp, I said one side was totally wet and dirty, the other side was completely dry and clean. Interesting. I'm listening. <laughs> That's not good at all, Zakobo. <laughs> not saying it's not me, just saying that it might not have been killed at that right time. Kind of putting me back in the, in the, uh, I guess, gun sights of everyone else. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. A certain something at the scene was used to cover the body. Couldn't we just, like, not show anything? <laughs> if she's trying to inqu incriminate us, we'd just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the one with all the evidence. I don't know what you're talking about. It's the tarp. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? Oh, that's true, Alex. We're gonna have many, many twists here. You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. There's also a bunch of duct tape. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. Shouldn't there be, like, blood and stuff on that side, though? This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. 
Crystal, that'd be wild if we were actually the killer. Because, I mean, there is some time we can't account for because we were so sick and delusional, right? But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. Oh, that's an interesting thought, Monkey. The duct tape over the wound. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it was like around the tarp or something, but that might make more sense. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. <laughs> yeah, Frost, didn't we take the tarp before Kyoko even got there? <laughs> He's just brilliant, that's all, like Sherlock Holmes. Why would Kyoko say that? Why would she want to make me look like the killer? No, I can't think about that right now. That tarp. If it was used the way Kyoko said, the tarp must have touched the body, right? But the body... Wait. Something's not right. ...had wet blood on there. And what might that be? I can't worry about Kyoko's motivations. If I don't do something, everyone's gonna think I'm the killer. It's like we're fighting against our best friend. I have to refute what Kyoko said. Oh gosh, what's the difference between body before explosion, exploded body analysis? I think body before We're explosion is more the body important. With the, tar. the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty! Okay, that one right there. Oh, that's too slow. I think that last one's gonna be it. Didn't get dirty, but then the uh, condition of the body before the explosion. There was like wet blood all over there. Oh yeah! <laughs> Makoto's in the non-stop day. That's kind of interesting. I didn't think about that. Okay, I remember the blood on the body hadn't dried yet. Byakuya even warned us not to touch it to avoid getting any blood on us. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevents. So the reason the tarp is because the spring. But the underside, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. There we go. No, that's wrong. Yeah. I <laughs> love that. It's a good feeling. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? But what about the chicken? Byakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. <laughs> yeah, Hero might actually be right. What? <laughs> if you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, you could still do that, but I like that explanation to make that not a case. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? Yes, yeah, this is where the chicken comes in. I mentioned this a while back. What if that wasn't the cause of death at all? You know, like the stab wound and stuff? Maybe they just use chicken blood and use that to kind of set the scene. The blood was camouflaged? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim? Mm-hmm. You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? Oh, because you want some, Toko? Well, there is those blood packets from the, like, uh, what is it, the doctor room or whatever? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office. Yeah, but I have a feeling it's more to do with the chicken. Hey, Forsaken, welcome back, dude. That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. They got the blood from right there in the garden, which must mean now it's the chicken. <laughs> Congratulations, hero. <laughs> Here it is. Chicken coop chickens. I got it! Nice. Could it have been chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? 
When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, Poor cluck, there cluck. were five chickens. Oh. But after the murder, there were only four. Where's the chicken body? So you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? <laughs> I know, right, Crystal? That's great food. <laughs> Man, that's messed up. Oh, no worries at all, Zacopo. <laughs> We've had some random kitties that just stomp on people's keyboards. We get all kinds of crazy stuff. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. That sounds like Hina. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree, that certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Now it's getting real crazy. <laughs> yeah, even Hina agreed. True, Frost, they could have still eaten the chicken and just used the blood for other purposes. And Forsaken, now uh, you know that it ended up helping, but it's kind of odd to keep the exact amount of chickens in that pen from your memory. You know, Forsaken, you can always tell when you're playing this game when there's something important and the chickens is one of them. It always highlights the text in yellow. So you're like, oh, there's a clue. There's an important clue. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Oh man, I did not remember that at all. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Kyoko Kirigiri is the ultimate Kyoko Kirigiri. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive ultimate. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they'd already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. It's an impressive, you know string of events to do all this. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off at 7.30. <laughs> the ultimate half answer. I love it. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off... I'll tell you this, it probably wasn't Hero. Wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? Hmm, like Toko? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? Hey, hey, hey quit putting the sus on me. Uh, that's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Oh, this is bad. Why do I feel like it's more like Kyoko might be the one actually guilty? And the suspicion falls back on me again. But why? Why is Kyoko trying to entrap me? I don't understand. The disguised dead body must has been added to the truth bullet section. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. 
Kiro! Come on, man! Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No! No, not that! I just remembered something super serious! Well, don't just stand there. Out with it! You know that knife we found all black and burnt? Oh, that's a good point, Zakoba. We have ultimate luck. We would win. The one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remembered. Uh, listen, more important. Now that we have the knife, what are we going to do with it? Uh, we can't let Toko keep it, that's for sure. We don't know what she might do. I don't want it anyway. So, what do we do? Why don't you hang on to it, Makoto? Huh? Me? Oh, that's right! It's it, it was the a knife we gave to Makoto? It was in our desk drawer. We're screwed. They totally f***ed us. <laughs> However, there was people in our room when we were asleep, remember? There was the person that's dead, who I can't ever remember her name. And we also saw uh, Kyoko. I think we think we saw her in our room while we were asleep because we were sick and delusional. You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? This is bad. It's not that I hid it. It's just... I kind of totally forgot about it, to be honest. Yeah, see, we saw somebody with it when we were in bed. I couldn't be sure what actually happened last night. I thought maybe I really did kill her. Suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced he did it. Well, thousand percent convinced. No, I, I think it's the ghost hero. It's the ghost that did it. Considering everything up till now, I should be able to make it clear. I have to prove that I didn't murder anyone. I'm not the killer. Okay, this is going to get tricky now. Oh, I feel like we're like in a head-to-head -head battle with Kyoko. I don't like it. What's the deal with the disfigured dead body? The knife we found uh, lodged in the dead body. Let's listen to everything first. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. Okay. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have that knife before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her, right? Uh, so there's no question. I think getting stabbed is You took the thing. that knife of yours and killed her with it. What I don't think the man you are, Makoto. I don't think the stab is actually what killed her. So now how do we prove that? We've already established that the coat was put on the body after the tarp was removed. Which means that when the knife is thrust through the coat into the body. The yeah. Knife we found so which one of these? It's the same one we gave to Makoto. It's disguised dead body, it really I think. Is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. <laughs> yeah, we're um, did have that knife before, We're going to get our way out of this. I'm just scared it. who it's going to actually it. be. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically... Well, getting stabbed... It... There it no, is. Nice. Nice. Break. Wait, hold on. The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover-up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her! No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp, and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood-stained coat until after they were dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and <laughs> once to cover it up. Now you're just making stuff up, Hero. 
Oh, that would be wild, Crystal. That'd be sad, but that'd be wild. The victim was stabbed twice in the same spot? No, there's no way that's possible. The exact condition of the body was written down for everyone to see. Let's see. That talks about the uh, color of it. Yeah, they mentioned blunt uh, trauma to the head, I think, too, Monkey. That's right. Body before the explosion. The corpse had a mask covering its head and a white jacket covering the body. A knife had been thrust in the abdomen and there were blood stains around the wound. The body had stopped bleeding, but the blood was still wet. It was noted, however, that there was no blood on the ground near the body. That, that could be it? Or is it Monokuna's account? Oh, no, that's not it. Let's see. Oh, it's the um, the Monokuma's file. That's right. Yeah, because that, that tells us like all the facts right away. Yeah, because in this it says uh, they were dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife. So not two times. Not two times. Calm down, monkey. You're going to get through this, okay? <laughs> um, they had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. So there's like the blunt trauma thing. And it was covered with wounds, but they were several days old, which is really weird. I don't know about that. I got it. There we go. The Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. Oh yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. Really, that was a clue we needed was the one stab wound. Then the knife was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. So it didn't matter that the knife was in our room. Well, I guess it might still because we could have used it to camouflage, right? They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. What I don't understand is why are we not locking our room at night? It's twice it's happened. 100% <laughs> frost. Exploding Ooh. the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. I, I really thought that was going to kill Toko when that explosion happened. The explosion severely damaged the body making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. Yeah, it kind of makes me feel like I might be more her, Michael. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but... I'm still hoping this all goes around to somebody else. Yeah, although I don't know who really believes us that we were sick, Monkey. I mean, we say we were sick, and we actually were sick, but, like, I don't know if we can really use that as part of the alibi. What's the deal with that explosion, anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? Oh, that's right. It was the bomb from the, uh... Monokuma body. If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion. I, I really do lose brain cells I might be dumb, every time. But even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. He talks. And Hina's not like the smartest cookie in the cookie jar, but she she beats out Hero every time. <laughs> he, he had conviction, Sokoba. I'll give him that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her or we won't make any headway on this. There's only one explanation I can think of for the explosion. Where was the bomb? Oh, fragments near the dead body. This, we found out, uh, that noted that the bomb, which had been removed from Monokuma in the gym, had disappeared, so they're probably related. I got it! After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know... I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. I didn't recognize whatever that was. I still don't know exactly what it is. That's only natural. 
because, of course, we saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. <laughs> oh, then the explosion was because sure. of the Monokuma bomb. I mean, we, we knew that part, but I didn't understand, like, what that chunk of rock or whatever it was. It didn't really look like a bomb to me, or part of a bomb. <laughs> really, Forsaken, I don't find it offensive. <laughs> but that's funny. I wonder what you're, like, correlating to that voice. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. Yeah, that's right. We're getting set up. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Byakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. <laughs> we still don't know what actually killed the victim. Oh, do you have the same uh, affliction, Zakobo? That's funny. <laughs> That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. I mean, I really hope it's somebody else. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. Kyoko really needs to speak up. She's just being too quiet right now. And speaking of voices, Alex, you can't unhear another character from Persona 5 in Hina's voice. <laughs> Same voice actress for that. Okay, we need to concentrate. <laughs> Just the file. Okay, we might have to take one of their clues as well. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? Mm. The explosion didn't kill her for sure. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. And it wasn't because of the knife, right? No. And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. The knife was a cover-up, and all those other wounds on her body weren't fresh. Which only leaves... Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. Oh, we should take that thing. The explosion didn't kill her I missed for it. sure. I guess. Well, yeah. She I'm not really sure totally what this is looking for me. Happened. Oh, thank you for the lurk, and Alex. it wasn't me because of the knife, right? And then... Oh, yeah. Uh, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. I'm gonna try one of these last two with the first thing that pops up. Something about how the other wounds weren't fresh. That's weird. Or what if she died, like, a long time ago? Like... Maybe not even this day, you know? Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. Not that right. one. Shoot! <laughs> I love that when he says that. Shoot! Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal... The explosion didn't kill... Well, yeah. And it wasn't... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she I'm was gonna try this the in the beginning. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Because none of those feels like a um, contradiction, really. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined. No, that's wrong. Thank goodness, I was scared. I was way off. <laughs> Nothing felt like. Oh yeah, that's the right answer. Mukuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it? Those were really old. Although they didn't tell us the age of the back of the head wound either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Of course, Frost. What's up? Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. I guess the question is, why does she have uh, old wounds? I do. Usually I, I don't even bother unless I fail one time using it. I don't know why. I think it comes down to like, is it like a limited resource of how many times you can do that? Because I know some things are kind of limited. Probably goes back to my t 
time of playing RPGs or survival horror games, I always have to save everything, you know? <laughs> True, being a soldier, she would have a lot of old wounds. I was thinking like wounds that just came around since they've been here, though. Because they said a few days old, right, Crystal? Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. But then, what was the murder weapon? Yeah, I guess I always bogart them until I feel like I need them. And uh, you can also, like, slow down time and some other cool stuff, too. The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely. Mm, not if you hit him with, like, the side of it. Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. Wow, you're, you're getting pretty specific there, Toko. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. So it actually helps you to shoot those things, Frost. I was kind of ignoring them until I felt like I had to get them out of my way. No, thanks. I bet you just hit me with the metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground, and, and spit on it. Jesus, Toko. <laughs> I feel the same way. Looks like we're on the same page this time. Seriously? What is going on here? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. Yeah, we got motives, Akobo. True. Or the other way around, too. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master. So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? The real murder weapon. It was the chicken. I mean, the only other thing we found that really feels like a weapon are these arrows, right? Um, was there another clue? What did Kyoko say? She snuck off into rooms with no cameras. That has nothing to do with it. Monokuma says that there were 16 participants and that Kyoko wears gloves. That's just their alibis. Hmm. The only thing I could think of is this, but I, I... I don't know, that doesn't sound right. A set of titanium arrows that found in the dojo locker. There appears to be ten in total. And then there's bloody duct tape, right? Along with the arrows, there was also wadded a ball of duct tape in the locker. The duct tape had traces of blood on it, it's assumed that it is related to the case, but nobody can imagine how. Metal pipe. Hmm. Really not sure. I see, but 15 minutes is way more than enough for most cases, Forsaken. And um, they only give you the extra, like, second or two for each. Oh, so it doesn't make a big difference. Yeah. I'll try the arrows. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, though. I got it! Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed her. I, I mean, I guess it's the right one, but why? I feel like I and cheated. something was the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. I mean, I guess the arrow itself, like I was thinking like shoot him through the head that wouldn't look like a blunt object hit, but if the arrow's titanium, I guess you could whack someone with it. Is it gonna be heavy enough to kill someone? An arrow? That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there'd be blood on some of the arrows, right? Are you sure? Maybe. That sounds... <laughs> You're kind of figuring this out, too. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! Yeah, <laughs> true. Bundle them all up. Then it'll be stronger. I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. I don't blame Hina for doubting it, because there's one more thing about that weapon. One more secret. Oh, 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 that's the tape! Okay, no. I think you're on the right path, Ross. So 
rather than just trying to hold them all together. I think they might have taped all the arrows together, you know, with a duct tape, why it's all bloody, and then use that to crack them on the head. That makes it a lot more sturdy, I would think. Yeah, I think bloody duct tape is going to be the answer. The titanium arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe. Yeah. Right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thick. There it is. No, it's wrong. <laughs> nice. You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. I mean, it could be strong, but if it's real thin, it's just not going to be able to produce enough force. It'd be like stinging them, you know, like slapping them almost. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. There it is. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. And nobody would expect it. That's pretty clever. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. Notice no stuttering in that entire sentence. One stick is weak, but put them together and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker... You know, <laughs> that's actually making me suspect Toko a little bit more when she kind of goes into that rant without any stuttering at all. And, um... I was always thinking, like, if it's Toko, it's going to be with scissors because of Genocide Jack and how she doesn't like blood and all that. But, uh, you know, maybe that makes more sense why she didn't actually kill him in, like, a really bloody manner. Uh, why she used fake blood, potentially. I don't know. And the fact that she had to go get the pickaxe still makes me feel a little weird about it. It was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh, no. You absolutely have. I think we did see her in the dojo <laughs> when we first found the dojo. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Oh, have a good night, Forsaken. Thank you again so much for the raid. I appreciate that. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, oh, um... Get some good sleep. I know I will be joining as soon as this trial's over. Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. Oh, did she actually say that, Weebatoom? I assume it was the opposite. Like, I didn't do that because I didn't use scissors. Or, I guess that first murder was with scissors, right? Which made us think it was her, but it ended up being a copycat. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. Well, the key card, right? I have evidence? Evidence that Kyoko went to the dojo. It must be connected to that dojo lot. We've seen her in the dojo. Like, literally talked to her there. But that's okay. We'll use this. I got it! The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is... That's what I kind of remembered, Sokoba. I thought maybe I was off, but that's, I thought that that made it more obvious. Right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. We have to go back to the tape. <laughs> we have to go back to the tape. Oh my gosh, Forsaken, get to sleep, dude. <laughs> Forsaken Kraken, what are you doing? Thank you so very much, dude. I appreciate that. With the gift sub to Sokobo, that is two gift subs you have gifted in this channel. That is very nice of you, dude. There are some tokens for you guys, so you can grab those and get some more points to use for requesting games and customizing your avatar and all that. You are too kind, Forsaken. Get some sleep. Get some really good sleep. Why did Robocadia just get two? Oh, monkey. You and that bomb. 
I gotta drop two more. There we go. <laughs> Diabolical monkey. Diabolical. There we go. Now you can actually catch them. <laughs> Thank you so much, dude. Get some great sleep. You're awesome. Have a good night. It was in my room? That it was. Don't bother trying to play oh. dumb. She's saying she didn't even know it was in her room. <laughs> the power. <laughs> you can actually unlock some emotes for free. I think you can like use the channel points to kind of do that, but it's like a temporary thing. Now you got them for an entire month, all the emotes. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. And a shiny little Nintendo controller next to your name. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Ha, ah, not quite yet. Not this again. You really- No, it's not that I want to defend her. Oops, it's just- I accidentally skipped that one, but I think we know what it said. There's one more thing I need to ask her. That's a tricky one to get. <laughs> it does not want to be picked up. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Because we're incapable of locking our room. It's terrible. Why can't we do that? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just protecting you. What? She was protecting me. See, I kind of thought that maybe she helped us from that character. Uh... The 16th student that snuck in a room was going to kill us. Then does that mean she... She knew I was being attacked. And she came to my rescue. That be when... Which would mean that Kyoko... She killed someone for me? Oh no! Michael! Nice catch, you got that last one. Good job, dude. That's gonna be so sad to have to put down Kyoko because she was keeping us alive. That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Ah. Uh. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. Yeah, I, I want to believe her though. I really want to believe her. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Oh man, Frost, when you, t you when you add in the movement of the characters plus the lag you get naturally from the stream, it's it's dumb luck. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. What? Byakuya should know better than anyone? What does that mean? Does she know that Byakuya did it? Hmm. When the body was found. Okay. Those words you just spoke. <laughs> what do you mean? Exactly what I said. It sounds a little unhinged. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room, correct? But could I really have done that? Hmm, wait, Kyoko gave her room key to Byakuya, right? Which would mean- Oh! I totally forgot about that! Hmm. Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. How do I zoom it forward? Yeah. You should understand that. Yakuya. Master would need that. There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is it Is the that proof? What you're saying? You stated that you said I hid the evidence and then left the locker key in my own room. But could I really have done that? Okay, I think I'm gonna grab the second one and shoot it to the third one. Those words you just exactly. I'm not, but you should understand. Yakuya. Master would never hide. So There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Proof? Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory. You said I hid the evidence and then left the locker key in my own room. Nope, Correct. that's not it. 
Okay, it has something to do with that left the locker key in my own room, though. Shoot! It definitely has something to do with it. Those yeah. words you just Biakia spoke. might be involved in this one. Exactly what I'm not the killer. You should understand that more. Biakia. Master Renia. There's proof that you aren't. Is that what you're... You stated a theory. Or you said I hid and then left the locker key in my own room. Correct. But could I really have done that? Okay, so we got the locker room now. That's true. Yeah, we have to actually find the, what we think is wrong. Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that. Biakria. What are you? Master would never hide something. There's proof that you aren't the That's it. So I had no, the idea not. correct. I just got them mixed up. There we go. Nice. If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Biakria. I see. So that's what you meant. <laughs> Touche. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. That worked out really well for Kyoko. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. No, that's not actually true. There was a clear contradiction in what Kyoko just told us. An obvious lie. But this... This just isn't like her. To try and save herself with such a desperate lie. Wait, what was, what was the lie? Does she really feel that threatened? Because she's the killer? Or is it something else? Was there something deeper meaning in what Kyoko said earlier? Oh yeah, then there was this weird thing she said. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of the school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. The mastermind's trap. The mastermind is trying to trap Kyoko, but what if that's not really true? What can I do? What should I do? The Mastermind's Trap. The victim was Mukuro, and Kyoko killed her. What does Kyoko really know? Yeah, if you try to spoil stuff, monkey, definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, you're just guessing. Guesses are fine for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, she did have that one um, special contraption she talked about that got into all the floors, though. I'm the only one who knows the lie. Probably because I'm the only one that talked to her outside the room about that. I'm the only one who can expose it. But who can I trust? What am I supposed to do? The Mastermind's Trap. If you spend all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. We know the danger, but if that risk means solving the mystery, we have no choice. <laughs> yeah, anti-monkey. <laughs> What do I do? I have to decide right here and now whether or not to expose Kyoko's lie. Oh, I mean, here's the thing. If she didn't do it, we should still be able to prove that, right? <laughs> Run away! <laughs> I'm pretty sure we should pursue the lie. Because we got to get to the truth regardless, right? So we know that she could get in there. I don't want her to die necessarily, but if she did do it, then she should be put down. Otherwise, we're all dead. Hmm. Oh, it's tricky. I think we have to pursue the lie. Gosh, I'm scared. I'm going to have to redo this whole thing. There was a lie hidden within Kyoko's statement just now. Yeah, that's right, Porquito. She has that special tool, so she could get in there. A lie? Isn't that right, Kyoko? You said it. The burden of proof is on you. So let's hear it. Where's this lie, then? Kyoko was definitely lying, and it must be because there's some other deeper truth she wants to keep hidden. What else is she hiding, though? <laughs> Monkey 666666. 
Jay. <laughs> I didn't have the key to my room because I'd given it to Biakia. That's true. There's no doubt about that, right? You are correct. So I couldn't possibly uh, have gotten into my room. There it is. No, that's wrong. No. Kyoko could have gotten into her room. You said so yourself, didn't you, Kyoko? Actually, to be precise, not quite. I use Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? Monokuma's secret tool? <laughs> Everyone's going to be so confused. Kyoko stole it from the headmaster's room. It lets you get into any room in the school. I mean, to be honest, it's pretty sweet. Which means she could have used it to get into her own room. Then I guess that's it. You're giving up just like that? You admit to killing... No, I'm simply recognizing that I lost. What are you talking about? Like I said, this was a trap. And I wasn't able to escape it. So I lost. That's all this means. Huh? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, did I make a terrible reaction? Or a terrible mistake? Then, are you saying... Kyoko, you really aren't the killer? Okay! Time's up! Crap. Huh? I still have to pick somebody. I'm sorry to say, but your time is up! All done! All Finish. The class trial is all over. This is terrible. Uh, but that's ridiculous. Since when is there any? It's because you were late. So the trial started late and time ran out. That's how he wanted to punish us, huh? So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of it you. It has to be somebody here. But I guess we already know who the blackened is, don't I, we? Can I still vote for somebody else? <laughs> like, just take a random guess, maybe get it right? Oh, it's not letting me vote. It just automatically chooses her, which is incorrect, so we lose. I'm pretty sure we lose. That's not a good sound. <laughs> Wait, we got it right? <laughs> we got it right? Does that mean Kyoko really is the killer? But something strange is going on here. There's something wrong with this whole class trial. Kyoko. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. Something's really weird going on here. Is everyone ready? Okay then. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time! I feel like he's just ready to get rid of her, you know? And gonna bend the rules and say we can kill her without losing. Oh crap, what's hers gonna be? Oh no. My, my second idea was it was Toko still because I feel like she did some weird shady stuff when she went out. Oh no, what's her as an exam? Looks like she's in a classroom. Oh, slowly getting pushed over to that thing about to crush her. <laughs> Learn, <laughs> this is your punishment. These are so wild. This is so sad. After school lesson. What is she staring at? <laughs> Something on the desk. Do your algebra. She looks pissed. I would be too. Mm. Oh god, one more. Mm. I can hardly look. One more. Oh, that sound effect. Oh. 
So yeah, is that like a fail state that you can keep on going forward? Or is it game over? And that's how the class trial of Mukuro, uh, Mukuro Ikusabe came to an end. I still had to wonder whether Kyoko was actually innocent or not. Regardless, the truth was lost forever. Even for me. I just stopped thinking about it. That was the end of Mukuro's class trial. And in the end, it would prove to be our last class trial. Once that case was over, there was never a single murder at Hope's Peak ever again. We had obtained peace in exchange for the lives of all the others. Or what the hell? Why are there babies here? What's going on? Peace, but only inside the school. Peace, but only for us. That was the only hope we had. Hope. Hope. Hope? This is hope? No! This isn't right! Was that Chihiro in like a picture of Toko dead? Makoto, why are you staring off into space? Don't you have a rebuttal for Kyoko's claim? Are they gonna let me redo that? <laughs> was that supposed to happen? Was there another way around that? And Zakobo, remember Hiro's prediction that the mother of Makoto's children and the mother of his children being the same woman? And how at the end of the FTE, Makoto begged whoever is watching, please let not let him be right. Oh, whoops. That's kind of a clever thing. I forgot all about that, Zakobo. Wow. Oh, good. I'm so glad to get a redo. I don't. hopefully don't have to do the entire trial. For claim. Oh, that's right. I have to... Do I expose Kyoko's lie or not? Okay, we can skip that. She's not wrong. I have to think about this very carefully. What do I do? So now, we're not gonna run away. We're gonna let it go and just kind of see where it goes because Kyoko knows that she's being set up for something. So we still have to keep her sus away and find another way out of this. <laughs> and the 30% accuracy. Um, apparently, I'm not as good as a, as a psychic as a hero, huh? Or I'm just as good, I suppose. I made my decision. I have to believe in Kyoko. There's no way she would kill someone. There has to be some secret here. Something that has to do with the Mastermind's trap that Kyoko mentioned. Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? That was interesting to see that, at least. I'm kind of glad I picked that choice. I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room. That it was someone else. But who else could it have been? I think it only could have been either Byakuya or maybe the mastermind. I mean, Byakuya had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. Mm -hmm. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone or put the key in Kyoko's room. <laughs> See, Zakobo, that's one thing I never understood is his accuracy being less than 1%. A lot of his things are like a coin flip. It's either like yes or no. <laughs> How could you only be 30% accurate? It should be at least 50. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. Y you're talking about me? What? It, it had to be Makoto, right? Come on. I don't see any other option. Wait a second. You've got it all wrong. We had a note that told us to look under the bed. Let's think about it one more time. There's got to be a hidden side to this case. Oh, wait. The key was just on the table. It wasn't under the bed. Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? That's true, Frost. Depends on the type of fortune telling. If you're just kind of coming up with stuff out of the ether, 30% is pretty dang good. Mukuro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead. And then we're thrown into a trial. And Kyoko even said, it's a trap the Mastermind set for us. So that's why this has to be... Can we blame the Mastermind? Okay, time's up! Huh? Time's up! 
class trials all over. Everyone can stop talking now. We blame Monokuma. What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have we... It's because you were late, so we had to push back the start time. So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you. Voting time? This is wild. Do I get to just pick somebody now? Oh, wait, that was the end. Oh, I thought I was going to have to pick somebody. Or maybe I still will. A chapter, or A for chapter five. Nice. Oh, and we got a lot of points. Now, who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? I already did the dreadfully wrong one once. Hey, hold on. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Wait, what? Who's a oh, it's pinning on me, isn't it? Yeah, oh no. <laughs> but I think this is supposed to happen because we just got like a congratulations message right before this. <laughs> I'm finally the real killer. Usually in games, I'm always the killer. So not, not on purpose. It's just fitting into the John Cadia lore. What? You think I'm the killer? Ugh, sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> Everyone, you're wrong. You got it all wrong. I didn't do it. Yes, indeed. Good job, everyone. Good job? Yep. Doesn't matter who it is. He says it's right. Yep, they got it right. No, I know that's not true. None of us makes... None of this makes any sense. This whole trial doesn't make any sense. Hey! It makes perfect sense. Shing! It's the same as always. It's just like all the other class trials. And I'm going to end it the same way. Thrills! Cheers! Kills! It's time for your heart pounding, positively thrilling punishment. I didn't pick the wrong answer again, did I? <laughs> Wait, I should have ran. Why do I. Kyoko? I don't expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. What the hell's happening right now? Kyoko? Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Are we going to die and just, like, play a new character? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> or is something going to save us at the last second? Hey, welcome back, Alex. Lunch break? Are you kidding me? I think we're dead. I think we're supposed to die, maybe, Alex. Even though we didn't do it. Oh, it's the same death that happened to um, the other one. And let's see, this execution has never worked when uploaded to YouTube. Even back in the day, it was always copyright striked. Thank you for the heads up, Sokobo. Yeah, luckily, the YouTube things have gotten a little bit better. I've gotten a warning on a couple of these that I've uploaded, and I just have to trim small sections of it out, usually like a minute, a minute and a half, which is... Better than cutting the whole video, you know? But yeah, certain sections definitely get cut. I think I've only had to cut like two or three chunks of video so far, though. I, I think it's scripted, Michael, but I think we're actually going to die. I'm just not sure if the game's going to continue after this because, um, you know, our friend can actually figure out the mystery. So we're going to play as Kyoko after this? That's wild. What a crazy twist. Oh, that's kind of awesome, actually. Well, for everybody that hated Makoto's voice, you luck out. Oh. I was going to say it didn't kill us. <laughs> Never mind, it had to twist. What? Do we actually not know if we are not killed or not? Sorry, did I miss something important in that? 
I was, I was assuming it's the exact same scene. Oh, I totally miss him, derp. I was like, oh, it's the same scene, okay. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, good, good. I, I know that we didn't fall, though, so good. thank you for letting me know Alter Ego actually stopped that. Even after being destroyed, Alter Ego got into the network somehow, which is awesome. I love that Alter Ego has now infected everything. Chihiro for the win. And Monokuma's upset. What's this? What's going on? Um... Hey, is that... Uh, um... Uh, yeah, it had to be. This is... Alter Ego. Alter Ego? Is this some stupid virus from that stupid guy? He must have planted it when he invaded my network. Damn it all the hell. I don't believe this. It would seem... It seems you finally made a miscalculation. <laughs> No, you miscalculated from the very beginning. What the heck? What was that? In other words... What I'm saying is, you shouldn't have underestimated us. Hmm. Hmm. Why are you talking like you already won? I barely felt a thing. It was a pinch, an itch. The stupid virus is gone now, got it? And so is Makoto. Maybe I didn't get to smash him flat, but you're never going to see him again. Yeah, who knows where we fell, right? <laughs> And let's see. So, Alex, no, we actually still don't know who actually did the murder, but this whole trial was a trick just to get one of us killed. And um, um, Monokuma was happy if it was either me or Kyoko. But luckily, our uh, old friend Chihiro hacked into the network and was able to save us from certain death. So I think we're still alive. To waste away in a garbage stewn pit. In a way, it's an even better special punishment. <laughs> but it's still not enough. I'm still not satisfied. I'm going to bring despair to the rest of you. Bring despair to the entire world. <laughs> and now we can't trust any trials going forward, right? The whole game is corrupt. Uh, um... uh is he gone? <laughs> Hey, Kyoko, what's the meaning of all this? Just what the hell is going on? Kyoko says she knows some secrets. Yeah, it's all a setup, Alex. All a setup. He was happy with either one of us taking the hit, because it was definitely one of the two of us, it seemed like. And you could tell Byakuya thought that in this version as well, based on his angry silence after the vote. Oh, true. That is very true, Zakovo. Calm down. It's okay. We're not the ones being trapped this time. In other words... Now it's the mastermind that's ensnared. What What did you say? What are you talking about? So... You'll understand soon enough. Very soon indeed. <laughs> or right now if you just freaking tell everybody. Come on. The massive high school towers all over all the other buildings in the bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field of This is the beginning of the game. A government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. This is deja vu. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. <laughs> yeah, is it Groundhog's Day? I gotta restart the whole game. <laughs> there are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. Huh? Oh, and we're back. Mm -hmm. With the same deja vu when we first woke up in the school. Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body felt heavy. It wouldn't be weird for me to zonk out in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing asleep here just now? It wasn't any classroom I'd been in before. Oh, have a good night, Crystal. Thank you so much for joining us. What the heck is going on? <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, it's not exactly the same. Finally. I could finally feel my mind and body start to come back together again. And then, I was awake. Or was this just another dream? A dream inside a hopeless nightmare. No, this isn't a dream. I could tell because the stench invading my nostrils was too powerful for a dream. What an awful smell. I was in a vast dark cavern with the barest hint of light seeping in. Trash was piled high all across the area. This must be some kind of underground garbage pit. A heck of a situation to find myself in. But that was just the beginning of my problems. Was I going to be stuck in there till I wasted away and died? No, I can't let that happen. Not after what my good friend went through to save me. I remembered all too well what had happened. <laughs> good, because I was too busy talking with you guys. I missed this. <laughs> Alter Ego saved me. And he used up the last little bit of strength to do it. So I can't give up now. For myself and for my friend. And with that, my pursuit of survival began. First up was to start looking for a way out of there. Perfect timing game to give me control back to save. Because it is just about time to wrap things up. But I got a surprise for you guys first. Let me just be sure I overwrite one of these. Is this chapter six now? No, still chapter five. We haven't completely finished chapter five. Okay, that's good enough. But we're making good progress. How much longer do you guys think we have? I feel like we are like right at pretty much the end game, but it's hard to tell if there's going to be like another trial or if it's just going to go completely haywire because now the secret's out. I'm not sure. I'm excited to see more though. I can't wait. 